We have come to the most awaited moment of today's program. That is the expert talk with our chief guest, Sheila Kuchesip. Our chief guest is an entrepreneur and the managing director of VSTAR. She's a wife of Kuchesip Chitlapalli, founder and chairman of VGuard and Wandala. She's a graduate in BSc Home Science. VSTAR is one of the leading laundry and lifestyle garment in South India and the Middle East. VSTAR, founded in 1995, by Srimadi Sheila Kochoseb, catalogs a wide range of quality products for men, women, and kids. The exceptional quality of Vistar products has made it a brand synonymous with comfort. The company also arranges for units run by charitable institutions to employ women to manufacture its products. Our chief guest is an inspiration to all the young ladies to pr pursue their passion and hobbies. Moreover, her passion and career becomes a role model to transform our passion for the upliftment of the society. I cordially welcome you, ma'am, to enlighten our young minds of our college. We welcome you, ma'am. Um, thank you so much. Uh, very warm, uh, uh, very uh, pleasant good morning to all of you, Reverend Sister Principal, Sister Vice Principal, and faculties and uh, all other uh, members and students of this uh, college. A very good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me to share my experiences with you. Am I audible? Uh, Sorry? Am I audible? Can you speak aloud? Uh, it's, it's yeah, you want me like to it. speak loud? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, now it's clear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, very good morning, uh, Sister Principal, Sister Vice Principal, and faculties, and my dear students. Um, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share with you my experiences, my life experiences, uh, and my experience as an entrepreneur. This is your Entrepreneurs Week, and now most of the colleges celebrate uh, Entrepreneurial Week, and that's a good beginning, actually, uh, a, good, uh, uh, a good gesture, because, uh, see, in our state, uh, to start some um, uh, enterprise, uh, that is uh, considered to be a very uh, huge task. It is a task, no doubt about it, but then, uh, it is good that you are uh, giving them a chance to uh, share, to uh, know about how to start or how to go with it and how to be successful in, an, as an entrepreneur. Uh, I, as, as you said, I started my uh, uh, Vstar in 1995. Um, as a small business I started, I never wanted to be a big uh, business woman or nothing like that. Uh, I believed I had some skills and talents, and I just wanted to uh, improve my talents and do something of my own. Actually, frankly speaking, I went to Vigard office for about uh, one year, and I, I, I realized that I, I have nothing to contribute to Vigard because uh, electronics and electricals, that, that was not my subject. I learned, I studied uh, BSc Home Science, and um, when I went to Home Science, everybody used to make fun of me. Uh, she is going to uh, learn cooking in the college. <laughs> but when I looked at the subjects, I, I knew it was not only cooking. There was food and nutrition, there was physiology, bacteriology, then uh, home management, child psychology, uh, uh, and the textiles and clothing, but my passion was textiles and clothing. I was born in a house uh, where my father had a textile come jewelry shop, and we stayed just right at the back of the shop. So every time after school, I used to go and sit uh, with my father in the shop, uh, seeing people uh, buying cloth and jewelry, and also there was a tailor sitting in one corner there. So I used to watch uh, how this uh, tailor cuts the um, garments and stitches it. And uh, we used to get a lot of cut pieces from the tailor and also some small cut pieces from the shop. So that was our hobby and uh, uh, crafts during childhood. And unlike these uh, days, we didn't have TV, we didn't have phone, no iPad, no, uh, there was one radio in one corner and that will be switched on only by seven o'clock in the night evening. 
just to listen to music for maybe half an hour. That was the only entertainment we had in our time. Uh, so uh, our, all, all our um, and and uh, more than that, compared to these days, we hardly had any uh, huge uh, syllabus in school. It was very simple, actually. I started my English only on fifth standard. And uh, it was a Malayalam medium school. I never knew how to speak in English also. But then my perseverance and uh, I just wa I wanted to speak in English. So I used to read a lot of books and magazines and listen to all, all kinds of um, videos and talks. That's how now I'm able to talk to you in English. And I would like to speak in English because uh, See, you have to be comfortable with this language if you want to go any to any part of the world, or even any part of India also, because with this Malayalam you cannot survive, and they cannot get job in uh, Kerala because hardly any industry is there, and uh, every year I don't know how many uh, engineering students uh, gets out of all engineering colleges and medical colleges. And where is the job in Kerala? So you have to go to other states or other countries, even for higher studies or even for job. So it is good that you get used to this language. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, think I, or I don't feel, I mean, I don't uh, devalue our language. But you have to know Malayalam. We all know Malayalam. But the, there is a chance to learn a second language, and that's English. Then, so it's always good that you be, uh, speak in English in college. In our days, uh, we were not allowed to speak in Malayalam in college or hostel. Not that uh, they didn't respect our language. They wanted their students to learn another language so that there is more proficiency in one more language. There is nothing wrong in that. We all learn, uh, know how to speak in Malayalam, so we don't have to impose Malayalam speaking in English uh, in college or hostel. So all these are uh, small lessons that I had, and I really value those lessons. Because coming from a Malayalam medium and coming to a college where there's only English, you can speak in English, you have to speak in English, it was very difficult for me. But then, uh, then that, uh, but we inculcated that uh, skill by reading books and magazines so all these are all uh, uh, factors of self development May, uh, whatever your weak weaknesses or weak points all that you have to sharpen and uh, excel in that that is very important uh, uh, a deer runs 90 kilometers per hour a deer in the forest I have visited uh, Kenya and uh, Tanzania, and I've seen how uh, these lions chase the deers and catch them. And the uh, lion may be 50 or 60 kilometers per hour. It cannot run as fast as the deer. But still, a lion is able to catch the deer. How it is possible? Uh, because the, you can see that when the deer running, it, is, it literally flies on the grass. It, you can see it flies a long distance. But you know what happened. When it happens, this uh, deer thinks uh, lion is mightier, bigger, and deer has seen many lions eating deers. So it, it is sure that the lion will catch him and eat him. So all this insecurity and lack of confidence make the deer look back and see, where is the lion? Is he nearing me or is he far? Every time he turns back the spirit, uh, is cut down like that, and drastically the speed uh, is uh, 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 the uh, uh, speed is uh, cut down, and uh, uh, and uh, and also the fear, fear in him, fear in him make him he cannot he is thirsty he cannot run. When when you are f afraid of something, you are thirsty, you and your heart beats ha faster, and your energy you lose energy like that, and you are not able to catch up. And that's how the lion catches the deer. This is uh, this uh, all this experience. This experience you face everywhere in your life, even in business. When you see a, a bigger brand coming uh, in front of you, you will say, "Oh, it will come. It will come and catch me, or it will come and eat me." But uh, this confidence, or the confidence you have in you and also in your products, that. That is, that is our energy, actually. So it is very important that you have the best product with you. And how is the best product uh, formulated? 
uh, you go to the market and if, it, if your passion is food, you go to the market and you taste the bread or pickle or whatever in the market. And uh, are you 100% satisfied with the taste? If you are not, what is the better taste? So always there is uh, room in the market for a better product. So everybody, actually business is something that you help um, your customers. It's a big help for your customers. That is, that is how you win the customer's heart. So when I started We Star, uh, I started with the Salwar Kameezes, but then um, uh, all my uh, dealers uh, informed me um, um, good, good uh, uh, quality innovations are not available in the market. So why don't you look at it? Why don't you try doing that? So when I heard that, I thought, OK, this is a good opportunity. There is a shortage in the market. There are no many uh, in a good brand in our ways. So I thought, OK, let me learn, study it. I went to the market, and I, I was, re I mean, I experienced it, because hardly any brand and no, no good quality. And the presentation is bad. The advertisements are bad. And everything was bad. So uh, I thought, OK, there is a chance here. and. Um, and it was difficult to get a patent master because um, in Kerala, no industries, I mean, hardly any industries. So I went to the market and bought all, all kinds of innovators and took out the stitches. And me and my patent master, he's a man. Uh, we learned how you grade the uh, products. But uh, when you come to my office, you can see some bra and panty on my table. And when the guests come, they look at what is this? Wow. <laughs> so everybody looked down upon women's in a way, so, and everybody thought it was a filthy business. But I never thought it was a filthy business. I still I don't believe it's a filthy business. According to me, it is a. It, every business has its own uh, merits and demerits, and its own uh, what do you call uh, um, uh, it, it, its own place. So whether it is in a way or outer ways, it, it, it has its own merits. So uh, and people are not getting good in a way. So that was an opportunity I uh, captured. And um, then we started making samples. We took to the um, and uh, it, only one thing I uh, asked my pattern maker and my uh, production manager. I want the best product. I want the best elastic. I want the best fabric. I want the best hooks and eye. I want the best buckle. And there shouldn't be any uh, flaws in my product. So we, we made the samples. And when we, the sample came up, it was uh, 6 rupees more than the brand that was running in the shops. Then there was a big problem. All my uh, sales executive came, ma'am, this will not work. We cannot go to the dealers with the higher price. So, so I said, <laughs> you just tell them, this is my product. This is the price. This is the quality. If you want, you can buy. If you don't want, we'll go to the other shop. So <laughs> some of them took, some of them didn't take. They, some sh uh, sh uh, shouted at our executives, how dare you come with a product with more uh, price in the market, existing price. All this happened, but uh, slowly, slowly they realized it had good quality. And I thought, okay, uh, the presentation and the advertisements during those times were very, very, uh, what do you call? It was all uh, vulgar and uh, below standard. So, um, what I thought was, okay, I'll make a better presentation, and all, uh, we had a, a photo shoot. And uh, all my relatives, even my husband, everybody was like feeling very bad. And they, even my husband got angry also. Why? What are you doing? I said, uh, <laughs> what is wrong in that? This is my product. Like a stabilizer to you, it is bra to me. Nothing else, and more and nothing less. And it is, just see it as a product. It is a product. There are so ki many kinds of products in the market, and this is one of them. And I really respect this product. I like this product. I love this product because it is the need of the hour and it is a big, huge help for the women. So, and we, I came up with, and uh, so slowly customers bought it and they became happy. And then I thought, okay, this is uh, what I wanted. Then I entered into Panty. 
They entered into panty and um, men's in a waist, brief, waist, all kinds of dresses. Now we have 3,500 uh, SKUs. SKU means stop keeping units. That is the products, like in color and size and all that. So uh, 3,500 products we have. So this was not a cakewalk. It was very, very tough. Because I thought, I dreamed that when they hear that this product is coming from Vigard, they'll just uh, accept, accept my product like that. But it never happened. It was only a dream. Uh, I had to, do, I had to start, start everything from scratch. I had to fight. I had to convince. I had to do everything that a beginner has to do. So that is another realization. Whatever you're com wherever you're coming from, that doesn't matter in the market. Uh, market is merciless. That's what the merciless market it is. So they look at only the product and its price and its quality. So that's very important. When you introduce a product, it should be 100% pr uh, right. But to produce such a product, what you should do? do? What you should know? You have to know about the product, you have to know about the raw material, where it comes from, where to get the workers, where which is the best place to start the industry, it's all important. But above all, I would always suggest um, after your studies, you work in some organization. If it is, uh, food is your passion, food products are your passion, work in some food industries. If garment is your passion, work in some garment industries and learn about it. And learn from scratch, A to Z, learn everything, which is the market, which are the products, which are your, who are your competitors, you have to learn everything. Then only you slow and start any industry with the minimum investment. If it is a huge investment, it will take, I mean, it will be a very expensive uh, learning for you. You will lose a lot of money. So always uh, take care with the minimum investment. We uh, we have about 16 uh, factories in Kerala. We don't manufacture ourselves. It's all made in convents. Like Sister said, uh, in Adapalli, we had also started a Churidari. Now we have 16 units, it's all run by sisters, and uh, we supply everything, all the materials, the, everything, because then the, otherwise the quality will not be the same. And we procure all raw materials and we give them. And um, our, uh, in all the units, we have one or two of our staff looking at uh, the quality and checking and measuring and all that, and that's how we produce. And we manufacture about 10 lakh pieces uh, every month. That's the capacity now. And uh, 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 my, I was born in a big family, about 12 children, and I was the 11th child. My, I lost my father when he was, when I was 15. Uh, he was 68 or something. So after my uh, father died, I felt uh, my mother uh, became a bit helpless. We had money, we had everything. But uh, my mother, she was just a housewife. Uh, she didn't know anything about, my bu about business. And my brothers took over the business. And I felt uh, helplessness in my mom. So that I thought, OK, every woman has to be uh, empowered. Every woman has to be independent, especially financially. Financial independence is very important. Because uh, during my time, uh, divorces, nothing was there. But this time, uh, these uh, days, we hear lots of divorces happening. And once you get, and many hus uh, husbands, people, when the girl get married, they insist that you resign the job. I would uh, ask you, I would request you, never, 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 ever resign your job for the sake of a marriage. That marriage will not work. So they want you uh, as a slave in the kitchen or in the house. That's why they're asking you to resign. So never ever resign your job. You should have your own income. You should be independent. Then whatever happens in life, you can be, uh, you can live independently without depending anyone. Uh, the, pra the usual practice in Kerala history was women always had to depend on men for money, for everything, even to go out, everything. Because they were not exposed, they didn't have money, so they were always tied up in the kitchen. So um, that was the life. But now time has changed, and uh, no, uh, it is uh, not necessary that you always depend on someone. In your young age, your father, uh, even when you're, uh, j even, um, even, 
when you i had traveled widely uh, worldwide and wherever i go in the restaurant after 4 o'clock is all the students who serve food so after their class they work in other small restaurants and other places and they earn money to pay their fees so from school days they make their own living we may not we uh, may, i mean it's not necessary that we uh, uh, replicate everything that uh, people do abroad but whatever good th- practices all that we can uh, uh, all that we can replicate so this is a good uh, because i see here even boys when they are even 25 30 they are not earning money and the mother has to mother or father has to support him uh for his uh, like uh, for his uh, expenses so this you uh, this cannot be agreed i i cannot agree with that when a, p- a human being is self reliant grown up adult he has to make uh, his own uh, money for his expenses a father or mother never ever should give money to the boys or the girls after they are mature let them earn some money then only they will uh, understand how difficult it is to make money it's very important and um, um, and when you start you know many people will come and tell you oh, why do you want that why don't you do this that so it's all up to your discretion what to do you don't have to listen to every every other people uh, person to um, understand what you have to do so whatever you mind say whatever you feel whatever you feel confident about you do that job and um, i can tell you one thing uh, if you, there are 100 people only 100 people start uh, enterprises only five five people may five or 10 people may succeed all the 90 people may not succeed that is the um, uh, numerals we see in the history but uh, i can tell you a uh, lot of uh, factors help you to be successful um, when uh, everyone is the product of their environment uh, so you have to get inspiration for maybe from your friends or your uh, market or from uh, media so it's very important and you need not be very very intelligent to be a business uh, woman you have to be an average person uh, intelligence the, the uh, more important are how you use your uh, the intelligence that you have see you need not be a first hand rank holder to succeed in an industry or in an, uh, on, as an entrepreneur so it's more important that you have to use your intelligence in the right way that is very important and also uh, um, never find excuses like oh i um, i can't do that i can't do this I, uh, if i do that i'll fail if i do this i will fail so you have to be very confident and just erase or delete the word impossible from your um, uh, dictionary nothing is impossible everything is possible actually when my husband was a, is a rich man he has lot of money everything so actually i need not do any work but i believed i have to do something i have to contribute something uh, even i want to want to be a little bit independent also and uh, when you introduce a product to get a good name is very very difficult it will take a long time to make a good brand but if you introduce a product a defective product in the market for the bad name it will not take much time just one week or one month, month is enough to kill a brand so take care to best uh, bring out the bring out the best product and um, there and there are many people in the society uh, so there are a lot of people with uh uh there are a lot of people with uh, uh negativity they always uh they are always negative they always discourage they always find fault with everything also they uh, uh they discourage you so um, so the, and there are three types of people in the society 
some people they completely surrendered because uh, they have no confidence they have no proper knowledge they have no uh, what do you call the uh, um, what do you call uh, there are some factors for an uh, entrepreneur they may be lacking some of them <laughs> so <laughs> they just uh, uh, surrender and there are second uh, section of people who partially surrender so what they do is uh, they will start something and after some years uh, they become a bit successful and when they are successful they feel oh I have, I have become successful now I can uh, start, uh, spend, start uh, spend, uh, spending money they be, uh, buy a big car or a big house and uh, uh, invest a lot of money unnecessarily just to show uh, the world that I'm rich and finally sometimes he'll have to surrender and there are the nev uh, third section of people who have the attitude of uh, never surrender they never never surrender even if some small small failures happen they just get get up from that and again start walking you have seen the small children walking when one year old child walking babies they take one step then then fall down again they get up again they walk so this is very important in your industry or in entrepreneurship also everything may not be successful in the beginning so after many trials and trial runs only you uh, uh, become successful so in the beginning if a small failure come you don't have to be discouraged you get up and start doing can't hear you can't hear at times you go feeble ma'am at times sorry. very feeble now now Some, also now, now it's okay now it's okay sometimes you go feeble okay i don't know what happened today morning even when i talked my phone also my manager said it's not clear is it clear now yes is it clear now okay so maybe i'll yes, raise my voice a bit okay so the never uh, surrender group that uh, that is the group of people who should start any enterprise okay so those kind of people are the top leaders in the world uh, all all of you know martina navratilova she was a legend in the tennis so um, she she played up to even up to 40 years i mean 45 she was 45 years old still she was playing tennis so someone asked her how, how do you uh, focus um, in your games uh, and uh, in your physique and in your sharpness even after 40 then she said every game is played on a six inch ground which is a six inch ground the place between your both ears this is the ground so it is all your brain that uh, does uh, the majority of the work okay, okay your body is important your physique is important but the, your brain is more important because that is the organ that gives you direction that gives you uh, confidence that gives you courage and strength so this phase is more important so from childhood onwards we should start uh, training our kids even when you are a mother uh, take them take the ch children take small small risks let them fail it's also very important that we let them fail uh, now these days you hear about so many uh, uh, suicides suicides like even 10 standard students 8 standard students when they fail in one exam they suicide so why this is happening it never happened in our time it never happened in my school days because we were trained to fail we used to hear a lot of no from our parents these days parents give the children everything they want everything they want they ask for a phone you give the phone they ask for, uh, the phone. they want to go for picnic or want to go for movie everything you give consent and one no they just cannot take so i think it's important that you say a lot of no from childhood nothing no harm in that also small small punishment you're giving you have to give that's what i said otherwise when the child goes to school one small one uh, shout from the teacher make her very uh, 
disturbed and she just cannot take it. She comes and tells her parents and parents go to school and question the teachers. No. A teacher has the right to correct or even to scold or even uh, get angry at the child, uh, the student. If she, what she's doing is not right. These small, small corrections, that is what makes an individual uh, has uh, what you call uh, flawless. Small, small corrections has to happen. And also Navratilava said that we don't live in bungalows, but we live in our minds. Our mindset is very important. That's what she said. So, um, uh, like this, and also I, I would ad uh, advise you, you, all of you have to read lots of good books, watch good videos, or uh, um, on the YouTube, if you go, you can see lots of uh, videos by prominent people. Also, listen to all that, learn their experiences, and it is all going to help. We start is now, uh, uh, I have about uh, 230 direct employees and another thousand women, they are making bras and uh, other products. So it's, uh, in that way, I feel a bit happy because I'm able to support a thousand families and that gives me immense happiness. And uh, I, uh, also, I, I would suggest you, you look after your health. Uh, once you get married or you have one or two children, still you have to look after the physique, you keep your figure, don't eat too much. Also, um, another thing is, now the phone is there, so everybody is busy on the WhatsApp. So many hundred, uh, 50, 10 groups, 20 groups, everybody will be having. And replying all, for all this rubbish, that takes another uh, major chunk of the day. So never ever spend more time on the phone. Maybe you uh, allocate time, maybe one hour in the morning, one hour in the night, or half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the <coughs> evening. That is it. The whole day, don't keep on looking on the phone and uh, typing and sending and uh, forwarding. It it is useless. It's just a uh, waste. It's a waste of time. So what happens is now, when a uh, twenty-four hour the phone is in your hand, then where is the time uh, for your hobbies? Actually, my yeah, I started my business from my hobby. So it is important that you have, all of you have two or three hobbies, maybe embroidery or stitching or cooking or gardening or making toys, I don't know, or interior decoration, lots of things, plants. Uh, when you go to the, um, there is an um, app called Pinterest. I always look at that. You should see the number of hobbies uh, people are having, painting, uh, my hobby is painting. So uh, when this lockdown came, I was like uh, one month I was sitting at home. I would have gone crazy because I'm just a very uh, active person. So um, I thought, okay, I learned oil painting. So I thought, okay, this now an opportunity has come for me to learn watercolor painting. So watercolor is very tough actually. It's very difficult to learn. I tried in the beginning, but I couldn't learn. So I thought I'll take this challenge during this uh, corona days and now I did about 200 watercolor paintings so every day I'll do one painting so I think it's an asset it's all my it's, it's an asset I consider them as my uh, work as an asset so and also uh, this, I invested all much of my time in that <coughs> and I could really really improve so day by day I'm improving in that and I stitch my dresses also sometimes so I never waste uh, one minute of my life. Also, it's very important that you spend uh, one hour for your body, however busy you are. I am f 67. Uh, my birthday was in, in February. I am 67 and my, my weight is the same for last 30, 30 35 years. I never uh, let my body put on weight. So that makes me, gives me lots of energy. Uh, also, uh, I feel happy, I feel proud about my body because uh, I can run, I can walk, I can play shuttle, whatever, do, whatever I want I can do, I can travel, I can trek. So it's all very important that you have a healthy body. For a healthy body, uh, because a healthy body has a healthy mind. It, it go hand in hand. So it's very important that you look after your health, also eat very little. Uh, now, 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 nowadays it's a fashion that go to the restaurant, 
uh, eat pizza, go do this, you know, eat pasta, burger, this, that, eat, eat, eat. And that is a common discussion in many groups. Even I see, even my group, all the women, they, oh, Avada restaurant, see, uh, we have to live, we have to eat to live. Don't live to eat. Also, another uh, sentence comes to my mind is, if you don't eat uh, food like medicine, you will have to eat medicine like food. Pressure from my hand, the cure, so on. But the food that the English is on the cover, the pressure of the garden, body, heart is not able to pump. Body is becoming, becoming, blotting, blotting, bigger, 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 and the heart is not able to cope up. And uh, also, uh, once you get married, never, uh, never spend too much time in the kitchen cooking food for your husband, because uh, my all uh, majority of my friends' husbands are no more, because all died of heart attack. They were all very fat, and Malayali men they do do usually don't do any work, because they read newspaper, eat coffee, and eat lunch, eat um, snacks and coffee in the evening. Can you hear? Can you hear? Can you hear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Yeah. Okay. So it is very important that uh, you look after your husband's health also. Uh, feeding him with biryani, parotta, chicken, everything, that is not your true love, actually. So give him very little food. And um, uh, also, uh, um, you can ask him to help you in your household course also. Because when, you, when, you, when I travel abroad, all the men have you big muscles and very fit bodies. But when you come to Kerala in India also, every man, man has a big paunch and they eat and drink. And they cannot sit down, they cannot bend, they cannot walk, they cannot climb steps. So it's very important that you, uh, uh, that, um, uh, what do you call that, um, Oh, it's a habit actually. You have to inculcate that habit of eating little and working out more. So this is what I do. Um, I think I'm the oldest uh, p person in my office. All are younger and I'm the person who takes the least number of leaves in my office of, because of sickness. Because uh, I think um, I don't get cold of your uh, touch wood uh, <laughs> because maybe uh, I eat very little and I work out every day. These are all very important. Also, you take proper hygiene in your life. Um, then be always positive. Never, never, ever talk negative things to others, about others, to others, in your family, with your friends, in your group. Be positive and look at positive things in life and you are going to win. These are all very important. I think it is time now. Uh, it's okay, ma'am. Yeah. Also, when you can make money and you can give some contribution to the society. It's very important that you make money and you earn money, you have a good living, but also give, share something with the society. That's very important. At VSTAR, we do our CSR activities at um, um, Atapadi. Atapadi is a, um, a tribal village, and uh, we build uh, toilets and water tanks and drainage in those uh, tribal villages because so many kids used to die of typhoid and cholera and all that there because they didn't have pure drinking water. So this is what we are doing. Uh, and uh, also be careful with your money. Uh, once your money is gone from your hand, it is gone. So spend for uh, the minimum and uh, save your money, invest in uh, good uh, uh, companies or shares or whatever without spending all the money you have. Always make it a habit to save some money because when you need some money, you don't, won't have to ask anyone. You should have some money with you always. Don't spend all the money you have. and. Um, also, um, uh, many people ask me, how do you get so many uh, very sincere employees? See, I don't get uh, sincere employees like that. If I get, everybody should be getting. So what we do is when I uh, employ people, I don't employ people from very rich family because they don't need money. 
I employ people from the poor families who don't have money, so that there is a need of money, there is a need of the job. And they will put their 100% heart and mind into the job. It's very important. Those who have a very rich family, they may not need money. So the job, they don't need the job, but they come for the job just for a time pass. So I don't entertain those kind of uh, employees. And um, when, I, when they come, I tell them, this is your company. This is your future. I have money. My husband has money. So uh, whether we start uh, 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 sustains or fails, uh, that's okay for me. But for you, it is your future. It is your life. So look after your company. The company grows, you will grow. If the company doesn't grow, you will not grow. So this is your company. And I delegate powers to the staff. I give all powers to my employees, managers. And they do a very good job because they think it is their company. I pay them well also. And whenever they have some problem in the family, we take care of them. We give them all the help. When there was flood in their houses, we repair their houses. And we give money to uh, re, um, uh, for the, the for to. Uh, uh, repairing and all those things we help them so all these are important that you uh, uh, keep your um, employees close to you like your family members just be empathetic uh, towards them because they are working for you and be a good leader to them give them suggestions uh, give them solutions Ask them for solutions. Let them find out the solutions. If they cannot find, you can help them. It's also very important, when, however uh, many managers you'll be having, but it's very important that you take important decisions. Actually, we had three brands before. Vistar was there, Valero was there, for women, Vanessa was there. But when I thought of starting a shop in the city, I, I could put only one name on the signage. So that night I couldn't sleep, my God, three names on the signage is not going to work. So next morning I told my managers I'm going to uh, put the name V-Star and no more Vanessa, no more Valero. So everybody was like, my God, Vanessa is such a beautiful name, Valero is a better name. Ma'am, we want those names, it's very attractive, this, that. I said, I know it is attractive, but practically it is not possible. So I have decided it, it is going to be V-Star. And I just named it V-Star. And it was a huge uh, turning point for Vistar. And Vistar brand became so visible after that because it's very important that you have a very short uh, brand name and only one brand name. It's very important. So take care. Uh, that is one point. And uh, then what? Also, uh, we, I had so many products and the many shops, they, didn't, they were not ready to stock my products. And whenever I advertise in uh, uh, media, so many of my friends come and ask me, Sheila, where do you get this product? We don't get this product in Cochin, many big shops, because the big shops are not were not stocking my products. Um, because only these are not very expensive products. So if they uh, sell 100, bra 100 brandy, uh, they, uh, what will they get? But if they sell a sari worth uh, 1 lakh, that is better prospective for them. So they stock saris and expensive things, and they just ignore in a way. So they didn't stock. Then it was my headache. Oh, my God, all my friends are asking where to get, where to get. So I thought, OK, we'll start a V-Star store. And we opened one at um, uh, Central Square here. So all my managers uh, said, ma'am, this will not work. It's a one lakh rent. Our products are not very expensive. So we don't think it is um, uh, viable. So better not to do that. I said, whatever loss comes, let the loss come. Let me see. But I am convinced. I am confident it is I am going to succeed. I don't know. I had the belief in my me and my products. And I started the shop. It was a huge success. And now we have 25. Uh, we start exclusive shops in the length and breadth of Kerala. So uh, that was a very important uh, decision I took. Now all my customers get all the products. 
it was my dream we have a, a new product team they make uh, they bring up uh, come up with new new products but these products are not reaching my customers so i was so frustrated it was just lying in the all the good products are lying in the warehouse and the, all the cheap products are selling in the shops so uh, that was a huge turning point in we star and um, the brand became so visible and we got lakhs and lakhs of uh, loyal customers through these shops and uh, that is another thing that is uh, another thing how we could grow so uh, these are the few factors that experiences that i have from my business and if you have any more doubts you just uh, uh, can put your questions here uh, thank you so much thank you for your patient listening uh, thank you so much Thank you, ma'am, for such a wonderful session. I think our uh, students have some queries. Uh, let us have an interaction, an interaction for ten minutes, ma'am. Yeah. Students, you can raise up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good morning, ma'am. Angel Lawrence, dear B English Literature student. Ma'am, are you? Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Now, few years ago, I had uh, read an article about you in the newspaper Hindu, in which title was "A Star in Her Own Right." That article, and now listening to your question, uh, I can say that you have born with a burning desire and a fire within to pursue the dreams. And I'm like to ask you that now international brands are available in every each and every corner of the world. So, ma'am, uh, let me ask: How do you tackle this competing competing world and the uh, increasing competition in the market, ma'am? Can you please say about that? See, uh, you, when I started my business, I was scared of my competitors. later i realized you need competitors see when you uh, put a plant in a sand in a small uh, pot it will not grow it has to grow in the soil with the wind with the storm and it will put more roots and it become stronger so you need enemies you need competitors so what happens when this world brands come i am exposed to those brands and uh, i increase my product range uh, i look at their products but most of the international brands are very expensive 1500 2500 these are the prices but ours is not highly priced but if i produce a bra for 1500 people may not buy because my brand is not that expensive so uh, it doesn't really um, affect me we are growing also we have started a um, 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 ഫോർട്ടിംഗ് <laughs> Okay. Are you are you are you, uh, is it clear? Is it clear? Can you hear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. 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 Uh, Hello, ma'am. Yes. I'm a regular, regular visitor of your shop and. Uh, With your colored braziers, I am interested in colored braziers. I get colored braziers from your shop. Yeah. I am yeah. happy with that, uh, and I would like to get more uh, uh, night dresses. Night dresses. Night If you can yeah, provide yeah. night dresses, only a few uh, available in your yeah. shop. Yeah. If you can provide yeah. more night dresses, it will be good. Yeah. yeah also uh, i wanted to tell you, I have a very innovative product, uh, sari blouse. Have you tried that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. 
yeah uh, you know what when I, when we were leggings i thought my god uh, whenever i go to a tailor to stitch my blouse it was never fitting so i thought okay we should, why, do, why can't we make blouses like uh, leggings so that was uh, a thought came to my mind a spark and i worked towards it and brought up the best blouse in the world <laughs> so uh, now we have about 20 25 shades of those blouses and it's very comfortable mother and daughter can wear and uh, friends can wear and uh, if you put on 5 kilos you can wear if you put uh, um, if you lose 5 kilo your weight also you can wear so i think it's a blessing for uh, people who wear sarees and lots of teachers lecturers and advocates and doctors whoever has to wear sarees daily this is a blessing so everybody you should tell me that that's true that's true madam <laughs> yeah okay they are very comfortable yeah <laughs> so this is one thing like, i mean I, always on my mind how to invite more customers to my shop how to attract more people to the shop that's how i reached um, i mean i uh, do things like this okay this uh, a product that many others don't have so this pro- only i have this product so people will come to me for this product only me only so all these are important that um, you go on increasing your uh, clientele that's also important okay i think i have a question from rizla rizla Can you see me? Yeah. Uh, ma'am, my name is Rizka yeah. K.A. I'm from first year being special. So, uh, my question is... It's not clear, uh, okay. Lot of, of disturbances. Lot of disturbances. One second. Lots of disturbances. I cannot hear anything. um i'm sitting in the class room that's why there's a lot of background noise is it audible now yeah okay ma'am so how do you know uh, or how did you know when you had the right idea and how did you face the adversities and doubts that in between them not clear i cannot hear uh, ma'am i will type in the chat box yeah Someone else, please read it. Arisla, you can put your question in the chat box. I'll read it out. someone else can ask me why is there are any other? okay the question is this ma'am how did you know when you had the right idea and how did you face the adversities and doubt accompanying them see um, many ideas will come up then you have to uh, uh, know which is the right idea i started with salwar kameez and after some years i came to know there is a scarcity or a shortage for innovators that's how i entered innovators once i entered innovators i realized uh, this outerwear is uh, lots of uh, is flooded actually in the market and uh, um sitting in kerala it was difficult for me because there is no dyeing units here there is no printing units here i wanted to produce with my own color, choice of colors and choice of prints but uh, uh prints so um, uh, it to get a matching dupatta was uh, like huge task sitting here so uh, i thought in a way so uh, i didn't have that much of uh, hassle so i thought uh, and also there is a huge uh, um what do you say huge uh, uh, the quality is valuable here in in a way so 
For outer wear, it's only the outer beauty, the color, the shining, and all that. But for inner wear, the quality is very important. So I thought, if I have to take care of, uh, to, um, give uh, importance for the quality, I should stick on to the inner wear. So slowly, I stopped outer wear. Like salwar kameez and all, I stopped. But there is no uh, uh, scarcity for salwar kameez there. Everyone can corner their boutiques. So I'm not worried about that. <laughs> you get everything now. Mary B. During those days, there was no much brand. But uh, in a way, that is, that is close to your body. And there is a trust. in uh, You need a trust to in a way. You have to trust the in a way. If, it is if I say 100% cotton, it has to be 100% cotton. So, uh, so I thought there's a value for the quality. That is how I uh, um, I recognized which, which is going to be going to be my future product. That's how I stuck at in a ways. And the adversity is that is there in any business, um, but that there also it was like a plus point for me because I gave so much importance for quality, and I I could win that. Thank you, ma'am. There is one more question with that. I think I will stop with the questions. Yeah. The last question would be, did you have any particular competition as a woman in the business sphere? Being a woman. Uh, okay. I don't think as a woman you have any uh, challenges. But you have a challenge as an entrepreneur. That is true. Whether you are a man or woman, it is there. But in my case, actually, uh, or in any woman's case, nowadays, women are give, uh, given lots of preference. Wherever you go to office, you are respected and you get respect and your uh, query is answered. So that is not a, um, a challenge anymore. Now women are more exp uh, respected and even police, the um, government, everybody is like uh, pampering uh, women a bit more than before. Not that. Uh, it is perfect now, but a bit better. So I don't think as a woman you have a talent challenge, but then uh, going to offices and uh, talking to all these people, it's a challenge, yes. Unless uh, other, unlike other uh, states or other countries, here everything is, uh, there is corruption, you have to bribe and all that. For women it's all difficult because we don't know how to go, how give bribe and all that. So uh, that is there for anyone. Uh, but particularly for women, yes, I don't find anything special uh, challenges. Yes. Now you can travel worldwide alone. So I mean, time has changed. And not, all that is not a challenge anymore. And women are smarter than men these days. <laughs> so, uh, Ma'am, there is one more interesting question. With, the, uh, with that, I will, will stop. Yeah. Uh, what was your greatest strength in your downfalls? I think uh, the product knowledge was my strength. Product knowledge. Without that, you cannot survive in a business. Because if somebody wants to cheat me, he, he'll just send all the material saying it is cotton. I have to know whether it is cotton or polyester. Also, if I, if I appoint a pattern maker, he'll make some patterns. Is it the right pattern or not? You have to know that. So product knowledge is my strength. It was my strength. It is my strength. That is how I could win over other brands in the industry. Because in the, um, my father had a textile um, shop, so I got I know what is cotton, what is silk, what is polyester, what is lycra, all that thing I know. Also, I studied the home science. There also I, I learned a lot about textiles. So all that is uh, helping me now. Yes, that is my strength. Okay? Yes, that's it, Maria. Thank you, ma'am, for instilling the energy of optimism and for motivating us to become independent and strong women. Thank you so much, ma'am. Next, I welcome the convener of the program, Dr. Salme Maryam, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Maria. I've heard... Uh, and I've read somewhere that entrepreneurship is not about ideas. It is about how you make ideas happen. And I think this particular session was a testimony to that particular statement. Mrs. Sheila Kocha, a great entrepreneur, had shown us how you can 
turn your ideas into market how you can produce your uh, ideas and how you can how you can produce things out of your ideas and uh, ma'am it was such a kind of uh, very innovating session because uh, you said that it was assumed that it was an it was a filthy business when you started your business it was assumed that it was a filthy business but you could prove to the world that it was not a filthy business but it is a success story it has become a brand name now we start has become a brand name at least to the care lights and i'm very sure that if uh, made no compromise in terms of quality and that itself is the backbone of your success story and this is a kind of inspiration that you have uh, that you have instilled in our students and this is what we have been expecting for and um, while you were talking about your entrepreneurship you are i mean business tips you were also giving our girls some uh, tips about how to be a good woman how to look after your own health how to be uh, fit and prim always and you always uh, you were you was also speaking about how not to waste your time in cooking but to invest your time in other matters how you can become success stories in life so uh, such an inspiring story was yours and i was also impressed by the way you spoke in english throughout uh, i was awed awed by the fact that you had studied in a malayalam malayalam medium tv of its standard and still you could manage to speak in english throughout and that itself is a kind of inspiration for our students so it was a kind of a very comprehensive talk not only an entrepreneurial talk but a success talk uh, in every uh, i mean in terms of the word so thank you so much from our bottom uh, of our hearts for you know, being with us for giving such an inspiration for all our students thank you so much ma'am thank you so much um, i'll be happy if some of you could um, get some um, uh, some knowledge or some uh, take away from my talk i'll be very happy and uh, but then uh, when i talk it is not theories because uh, i i have only one bachelor's degree i don't have any uh, formal education in management so uh, my management theory is only my experiences learning from my experience It's all simple theories, so anybody can understand. So that is a, a what, do you, what do you call a blessing in this guys? Because if a, if I had lots of education, may, many of you may not understand what I speak. <laughs> Now it's very simple. <laughs> so thank you so much. I enjoy. In fact, your simplicity is your greatness. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. And yeah, may, may I also ex extend my gratitude to our dear principal, Dr. Sister Gigi Janama Sevia. who was always a catalyst uh, inspiring us to think out of the box to think in an innovative manner thank you sister rolls uh, even though uh, she is absent now she had uh, some of the duties to attend uh, may i also extend my gratitude to uh, dr sheena sevia iqsc coordinator uh, she is a person who always uh, fills us with for positive energy to our brain thank you ma'am for being such a wonderful leader and then uh, a big thanks to my hall team uh, miss uh, minimal who is my joint convener and uh, maria for being the anchor of this uh, program and my hall team